To review Part 1, the primary and secondary planes each bisect the pyramid of data and lay in an orthogonal relationship to each other, as shown here in the model. When the 3D data is presented as a full volume, the green and the pink planes are buried in the pyramid of data and not visualized in the uncropped image. Remember, the primary green plane is also referred to as the lateral plane, and the secondary pink plane is also referred to as the elevation plane. First we will discuss Live 3D. In Live 3D, the volume of data is not a complete pyramid. While the entire green plane is fully represented, only 50% of the secondary pink plane is represented in the volume at any one time. The 50% of the pink plane, which is represented, can be selected with the back, center, or front button on the right touch panel. The terms front, back, and center can be thought of as specifying a location relative to the blue P marker on the secondary pink plane. Here the back and front locations are illustrated on the model. Since only a part of the full elevation plane is selected in Live 3D, only a wedge of data is displayed as opposed to a full pyramid. The lateral or green plane dimension is identical to a full volume acquisition, but the elevation plane is much smaller than in a full volume acquisition. This results in a wedged shaped volume. The smaller data acquisition of Live 3D allows the machine to present volumes with higher frame rates and better temporal resolution. This is true since the scan line burden is reduced in the lesser volume. In the model, a so-called front selection would include all the volume encompassed by the yellow plane and the green plane. A so-called back selection would include all the volume behind the green plane. Selecting center would encompass intermediate data, which would include the back half of a front selection and the front half of a back selection. Now let's consider how the home view will be displayed in each of the three possible live 3D volume views. In the case of a front selection, the entire yellow plane will be displayed on FOSS to the viewer. In the case of a back selection, the entire green plane will be displayed on FOSS to the viewer. In the case of a center selection, a face which lies halfway between the yellow and the green plane will be presented to the viewer. In the volume home view, the green plane contained in the volume will always be oriented such that the plane marker during acquisition will appear on the right side of the displayed screen. Now let's consider the displayed machine images. The lower left side reference image will always display the lateral plane, and the lower right side image will always display content from the elevation plane. The lower left hand reference image displays a plane equivalent to the entire green plane of the model, regardless of whether front, back, or center is selected. The lower right side reference image will always display an image which is some section of the pink plane in the model, but never the pink plane in its entirety. Note that, in general, these reference images will be different than the surfaces of the volume displayed in the top center screen. This latter point may be confusing, so let's go through each selection step by step. We will start with the so-called back selection, which is the default selection of the machine. When back is selected on Live 3D, the reference images will show the full green plane on the lower left screen and the back half of the pink plane on the lower right screen. In this case, the home view of the volume image on the center top screen will display an on view of the green plane. Only in this selection will the front surface of the displayed volume be identical to the reference display in the lower left screen. If the volume image is rotated slightly about an axis running from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, then one of the two elevation sides of the volume will be displayed. Depending on which way the rotation is made, one side or the other will be displayed. In either of these cases, the displayed face of the volume 
will be different than the reference image on the lower right hand screen. The reference image on the lower right hand side of the screen is equivalent to a section of the pink plane which as you can see is actually buried midway into the volume and is not evident on the surface of the rotated volume. In the second case we will discuss the images displayed when the front selection is made. In this case the lower left hand reference plane is unchanged from the situation where back selection is made. It still displays a plane equivalent to the green plane. The lower right hand reference plane now displays the front half of the pink plane between the green and yellow planes as seen on the model. In the home view of the volume image on the center top screen we see a plane equivalent to the yellow plane presented directly to the viewer. If this volume is rotated about an axis running from the top of the screen to the bottom then one of the two sides of the volume will be displayed. The side views will demonstrate that area of the volume between the green and yellow planes. In these cases the displayed side face of the volume will be different from the lower right hand screen. Since the plane illustrated in the lower right hand screen is actually buried midway into the volume and is not evident on the surface. The shape of the lower right hand reference plane will only be similar to the shape of the volume's elevation side when the volume is rotated one way but not the other. We see here that the shape of the volume's elevation side is the same as the lower right hand image when the volume is rotated one way but it's not congruent when the volume is rotated the other way. This is because the machine always displays the lower right hand reference plane with the reference marker on the right screen. That is if the reference marker was displayed which it is not. While the volume view can show the elevation aspect from either side the plane in the lower right screen is always displayed in a fixed manner regardless of how the 3D volume is rotated. While this is demonstrated here for the front view, it also holds true for the back view as well, for the exact same reasons. Finally, let's consider the relationship of the displayed images when center is selected in live 3D mode. The lower left hand image remains unchanged and still represents the full green primary plane as seen in the model. The lower right hand image now shows a plane equivalent to the center section of the pink secondary plane in the model. In this case the plane displayed will be limited to the middle 50% of the pink plane. It will not include the front 25% or the back 25% of the pink plane. The 3D volume home view on the top center screen will show on its face a plane equivalent to a plane found somewhere between the yellow and green planes in the model. If this home view is rotated to one side or the other, only an intermediate wedge will be seen. Again, any surface on the 3D home view will be distinct from the reference planes shown below since these reference planes are again buried in the 3D volume and not evident on the surface. In our next video we will build on what we have learned so far and show how the default MPR green, red, and blue planes relate to our acquisition volume.